Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. In this introductory video, I want to talk a little bit about the background of Ordinary Differential Equations and what I intend to cover in these lectures. In my experience, whenever you're faced with a mathematical phrase such as ordinary differential equations, it's best to understand it by starting with the last word and working your way back to the first, equations. We all know what equations are. There's an equal sign, there's something on the right-hand side, something on the left-hand side. And that something is an expression involving the derivatives of a function, and that's differential. Ordinary is a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that later. So what I want you to realize is that the differential or the derivative of a function measures the rate of change of that function. It quantifies change and change is everywhere. And this mathematical framework that we develop will enable us to model change wherever we might see it. Expand your imagination. I'm going to show you examples of where ordinary differential equations is, are used, which you might not have considered. Where does the subject come from? Mechanics, originally. This quote of Leonardo da Vinci really encapsulates how mechanics is important for the foundations of many areas of mathematics. So Leonardo was born in around 1450. And we're all familiar with his uh, mechanical contraptions that he built. About 100 years later, 1550 roughly, a little bit, 1560 or so, Galileo came along and he started to develop the physical theory do, by doing experiments of the laws of mechanics. And then about another 100 years later, Newton and Leibniz came along and developed differential and integral calculus, which enabled them to give a mathematical description of the laws that have been that were developed by Galileo, and that's the um, original development of of mechanics over a long period of time. The equations that have come up from this subject, ordinary differential equations, have literally changed our lives. And here are three such examples. Now, I know mathematicians often say these types of things, oh, this is going to change your life, but in this particular case, it, they really have. So think about things that have changed your life, the lives of other people, society, the world, things like wars, pandemics, famines, technological advances, such as the development of the automobile, airplanes, space travel, computers, biomedical advances, all of those, at the heart of them, these, these ordinary differential equations here have played a very important role. Newton's equations at the top describe classical mechanics, things such as the motion of satellites, both artificial and natural. They can describe the motion of cells in our body. Uh, the Schrodinger equation at the bottom can be viewed in some sense as Newton's equations for quantum phenomena. Hamilton's equations are quite interesting in the way I put them here. They're, they're sort of sit midway between Newton's equations and Schrodinger's equations, and I've done that for a reason. They're a reformulation of Newton's equations, and they were the bridge for the development of Schrodinger's equations. They, in a sense, formed the mathematical structure for Schrodinger's equation. And in fact, by themselves, that's an interesting statement, mathematical structure from Hamilton's equations comes a, many uh, areas of study of pure mathematics, which are current today. Symplectic geometry, symplectic topology, for example. All of this from mechanics. It won't surprise you that if I tell you that this subject of ordinary differential equations is going to be very important and useful for you, not only if you choose to um, do postgraduate studies, but if you decide to go into industry. For example, you could become an actuary. 
You could become a climate scientist and model the climate with ordinary differential equations. You could develop computer games where ordinary differential equations are an important mathematical model. And social sciences are modeled, such as crime. And of course, you could become a rocket scientist because we are going to need to colonize our solar system and beyond. In fact, differential equations are more powerful than bullets. I want to tell you about the subject matter that I'm going to cover. So I'll be using my book, Ordinary Differential Equations, and um, I gave you the URL for how to obtain it. So an obvious question is, why my book? Well, it's free. <laughs> and that's actually not uh, an unimportant consideration. So when I was first given this course to teach a few years ago, it's, it's for second year mathematics students in uh, the United Kingdom. I looked around at, you know, many years ago, I had the second year mathematics course in differential equations. Um, and I've done research in the area for a long, long time. Um, I looked around at books and how other people had taught it. And, you know, the books I saw were expensive, um, quite expensive, in fact, 100 to 200 pounds, potentially, and that's not acceptable. Um, and, uh, but the, what bothered me the most was the subject matter. There, there were, it was, it was not the subject matter of what is used, of how people use ordinary differential equations in research and how they use it in industry and in, um, in the job market nowadays, what you might expect to have to know. It's just the, just the type of thing that had been taught over and over and over again. And when I was looking at the topics, I thought, yeah, I was taught this a long time ago, but I never have used it. I developed a new course on the topic, and that's what I'm going to teach you in these lectures. So there are 10 chapters in this book, and I intend roughly to produce three video lectures per chapter. So I know it's not easy to do in this format, but one of the things I always tell students at the beginning, the first lecture is, look, I have a reason for everything I teach. There's no busy work. We don't have time for that. So if you don't know why, I'm, why there's a certain topic that I'm teaching you, ask me because I have a reason for it. I know how it's going to fit into the entire structure of things and how it might be used for something else. Of course, I do occasionally indulge myself by putting in a, uh, a pet topic that I like, but I tell you that, and I'll tell you why when that occurs. But these 10 chapters are kind of the crux of what you need to know. And then I have six appendices. Um, and the first appendix, appendix, Jacobians, inverses of matrices, and eigenvalues, this is something that you already know, you're supposed to know, but you, in my experience, students tend to have forgotten. Appendix B is, in some sense, an entire course of what is often taught for differential equations. And it, you, know, you can boil it down in one appendix, and if you have the right mathematical structure, it's dead easy, and you can go from there on. Finding Lyapunov functions. Okay, I, t I talk about Lyapunov functions early on, if you saw back from the table of contents, but then everyone always says, okay, this is great. This theory is great. If, I have a, if I'm given a particular problem, how do I find the Lyapunov function? And in this appendix, I expose the dirty little secret behind that. You can't really in general, but you can do a few things. And center manifolds, that might be a slight indulgence, but not really. There are a lot of big underlying themes of what you want to do in, in mathematics and physics in modeling that where this is a, a fundamental idea. Dynamics of Hamilton's equation. Okay, this is a, a favorite topic of mine, and I couldn't resist putting it in because 
in all sorts of areas of research later on that I've been involved in, you may not be, knowing something about Hamilton's equations and bifurcations of Hamilton's equations, bifurcation theory I had early on, is pretty important. And then finally, everyone's learned, heard about chaos. We don't really have enough mathematics to go into this in great detail, but we can really understand the phenomena and what the issues are. That's the course in a nutshell. If you go through my series of lectures, what are you going to get out of it? I mean, this is a course in ordinary differential equations, kind of the first course after calculus in ordinary differential equations. Are you going to be able to solve a lot of ordinary differential equations? Sadly, no. I don't know how to do it, and nobody else does either, really. Um, and that's kind of one of the misconceptions of, of that you're often taught in the early years of mathematics. You're given a lot of problems to solve, and you're given a technique to solve them. And so it's natural to think that if you're given a if you're taking a course in ordinary differential equations, you're going to be taught how to solve ordinary differential equations. And I'll teach you how to solve some important classes, but it's probably true that the most of the differential equations that you're going to encounter in real life, you're not going to be able to solve. In fact, one of the you know it, it's too bad that early on in your teaching, you're not given a number of problems where there is no solution because that's where the real test comes in. And I love this quote of Dirac. Dirac is one of my favorite physicists, born in Bristol in 1902 in the neighborhood of Orfield, not very far from the university. I consider that I understand an equation when I can predict the properties of its solutions without actually solving it. That is one of the skills I really hope you get out of this course. How to think about, how to understand, and how to get information out of a differential equation. If you can get all the information out that you need, whatever that might be, there may not be any need to solve it. You know, in research, I often say, people are given a problem, what does it mean to have a solution of that problem? Because that makes you think about what kind of information you want to get out of that problem. And that's really the underlying theme for this entire course. There's plenty of mathematics. We're going to solve a lot of equations in some sense. But in reality, in my many years of experience doing research, rarely can I solve things, but I have a big toolbox that I can bring to bear on some tough differential equation. I can get some information out of it, and I can learn a lot about its structure and what it's telling me. So that is what I hope you get out of this course. I'm really looking forward to it. This is one of my favorite courses to teach. Students have tended to like it, mostly. And uh, I'm looking forward to delivering these lectures to you. And hopefully, you'll enjoy them. OK, goodbye now, and I'll see you soon.